Life, it's full of cycles and cycles and cycles. Hello, Ralph McIntyre with Astro Map Links. Well, I'm here to do another video. It's a little different video. I actually got some notes. I took notes for this video. I want to talk a little bit about the philosophy of astrology as it relates to life. And I want to talk about how to kind of work with your astrology from an evolutionary perspective, which requires working with your life from an evolutionary perspective, because what are we evolving? <laughs> We're evolving ourselves, our hearts, our reactions. That's what the whole game's about, if you believe in this or not. So if you're watching my videos, I presume you're kind of believing in that. So I've been doing a lot of meditating on this subject and really kind of thinking a lot about it, as I often do. And one of the things I kind of noticed is the zodiac, a circle divided up into 12 pieces known as the houses. The first house is the beginning and the 12th house is the end. And so... A lot of times people will talk about astrology as a cycle that starts in the first house and ends in the 12th house. You know, it starts with Aries and ends with Pisces. And so I want to talk a little bit about that, but I want to talk about it from a perspective of having two roads. You can go down one road and kind of take this one path, or you can go down another road and take another path. And so the roads are basically courage and fear are the beginning of the two roads. And they end with surrender or death. So in the first house, and almost in any cycle in life, anything you do, you can start out with acting out of fear or out of courage. And depending on which road you take, you know, is where you're going to end. And so, obviously speaking, fear is going to take you down one road and courage is going to take you down another road. And this cycle is like in everything, in the little cycles and the big cycles, in life in general or your day or your hour, your next project, this video, you know is a cycle. I start, does it end in death as in delete, or do I surrender into putting it out on the internet? Well, we'll see. If you're listening to it, you know what happened. And it's not like there's one way or another. It's not like courage and fear aren't friends that hang out together. And it's not like for me, especially with these videos, that I don't have fear, you know? I can't tell you how many videos you don't get because of fear, you know? It's a lot of them. All the videos you see, I face that fear with courage. And then, if you think about all the different things that are going on in the world, and everyone's pointing fingers at this and this and that and that. And on a lot of levels, what's happening out in the world, what's happening outside, is a reflection of what's happening inside. So if you have a lot of judgment inside, which most of us do, you're going to see the ramifications that in the outer world. So rather than pointing the finger saying, hey, you stop doing this, Look inward. So anyways, I won't get too much on my soapbox, but this is a little bit of a soapbox video. Imagine that. I'm up on my soapbox talking, philosophizing, telling you what I think about astrology. So, as I started this thinking about this video based on the fact of just kind of thinking about courage, and surrender. You start it with courage, 
And then you surrender. You know, and I was just talking to a friend about their mom and hospice and death. And she was really surprised about her mom not wanting to surrender into signing up for hospice. Which, you know, if you don't know about this, in the, in the States at least, hospice is like saying you're going to die in six months. Which, you know, who wants to do that? You know, it takes quite the evolved person to be like, hey, I'm going to die in six months. And her mom wasn't up for it. And we had this long talk and I was telling her about this video. And so it's like at the end, you know, the beginning starts out with courage or fear in the end, the 12th house. Surrender. Because the 12th house is often considered the house of death. You know, losing. And to lose something is to not surrender. And like I say, these there's, there's no solid line between these words I'm going to throw out in this video. Because you lose something, you surrender into it. But you still lose it. But it's, it's the how you take it, you know? Death. It's like, are you surrendering into letting go? You know, we're talking, I talk a lot about Pluto in this channel, you know, and a big part of Pluto is like, what are you holding on to and what are you letting go of? What are you, what are you letting death take and what are you surrendering? What are you letting Pluto kill off or what are you surrendering to the God of Pluto? So anyways, I was thinking a lot about the different houses. And so, and this is often talked about in astrology where, you know, the things are born in the first house. That Aries energy, that initiation energy. And then they move into the second house. So in the first house, the words I came up with is courage and fear. You're either kind of taking the courage road or you're taking the fear road. You're either embarking on this thing or it dies in the beginning at the fear road. Then we move on to the second house. And for the second house, I have resource or doubt. So when you come upon this idea that is born in the first house, comes to the second house, you either see the resources you have to accomplish this, and the resources could be money, it could be all sorts of different things. It could be anything you could use to accomplish what you want to, you envision in the first house. Or, again, you could go to doubt, you know, that fear will be like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. And then you get to the second house and it's like, oh, I, come on, I can't do that. Hello? You know, versus if you're like, hey, I can do that with courage. And then you come to the second house and you're all like, hey, this is what I can use to do that. Then we move on to the third house. The Gemini house. And the words that came up with that is curiosity or paranoia. So if you come out with that courage and you see the resources, and then you look at it from the perspective of Gemini, which is curious. Hey, what, what's the... What's out there, you know? Versus if you come at it from fear or doubt and then you get into paranoia, like, what's out there? Oh my God, there's all these different things that can like, oh. And so, as you think about this, I want you to think about how you do everything in your life. And, and you know, there's a blend of this in everything. You know, sometimes I'm courageous, sometimes I'm fearful. You know, sometimes the fear turns to courage or sometimes the courage turns to fear. So anyways, we're on to the fourth house. The house of cancer. And the words that came up with that is nurturing or smothering. So you're either finding the... The, the energy you need to nurture yourself, nurture this idea, nurture this creation. So if you think about it, it's first house that courage to start. The second house is the resources. 
The third house is the curiosity. The fourth house is kind of the nurturing. You know, or on the other side of the stick, it's that fear in the first house, the doubt in the second house, the paranoia in the third house, and the smothering in the fourth house. So, on to the fifth house. The words that came up with this are creativity and compulsion. And so, you have this idea, you nurtured it. Now it's like bringing in that curiosity, which is the brings in the creativity. It's like, you know, what what can I do? What can I, how can I do this? The Leo sign, you know, the fifth house, the sign, the house ruled by the sun. That solar authority, authority. On the other side of it, it's this compulsion. It's just like kind of, oh my God, what am I, what am I gonna do? Do, do, do? What am I, da, da, da? You know? Moved on to the sixth house of skills or criticism. So you either see the skills or develop the skills to accomplish this thing you was born in the first house. Or you, you know, be critical, you know? I can't tell you how many videos end up on the critical floor. How many of the things I do, how many of the things that I haven't done end up on the critical floor? I suspect all you out there in YouTube land have criticized it down into the cutting room floor. Oh, this is not right. I can't do that. You know, the Virgo house, the sixth house, the physical reality then we move on to the seventh house, you know. Friends, lovers. The seventh house I have working together or controlling. You're either figuring out the people that can help you do this, or you're trying to control people into getting, you know, what you need, and you know, or you're feeling controlled by other people. Oh, I can't do that. I don't have time. I got obligations, all this other stuff. And so part of the whole theme of this video is it's like looking at the dichotomy sometimes. And it's like a lot more nuanced than this. I'm kind of simpling it way down so I can talk about it and make this video not like hours long. So the seventh house, the house of Libra. You're either figuring out how to work together or you're being controlled or trying to control. In the eighth house, that Scorpio house, all my Scorpio people. So we've got the people that we're working with from the seventh house. Then there's that merging. It's like the combining the ideas, the combining of the energy, the combining of the resources. Or the projecting, those are the words I have for the eighth house. Merging or projecting. You're either figuring out how to combine or you're projecting onto the other person and other things or they're projecting onto you and it doesn't necessarily go well. Ninth house, Sagittarius house. You know? Get to the ninth house and you're either open to new ideas or you're dogmatic, closed to new ideas. You're either open to learning or the ideas you might already have, the philosophies, the, 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 the owning it. You know, you get that curiosity that is born in the third house and eventually you have to kind of own it. It's Sagittarius. Or you can get all stuck in the old way. Oh, no, we can't do that. That's no, never, you know. And so it's like all these things, you know, it's like in each house, there's this like, you know, two options. There's really more than, you know, I, I mean, I could, I could go on with a zillion options in each house, but I wanted to kind of simplify it. All right, the 10th house, reputation, either good or bad, you know. The Capricorn house, out in the collective, you know? It's like you're either, you know, doing things and building a good reputation or you're doing things and you're building a bad reputation, you know? And so much of what 
you can do in the world depends on what people think of you. You know, if people think you're going to do it, they're going to put their energy behind it. If people don't think they're going to do it, they're, you know, not going to put your energy behind it. And the interesting thing about this is it's like, don't get lost in the thinking it's the first, then the second, then the third, the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, twelfth. It's like a lot of these houses, like the reputation goes back to the seventh, goes back to the eighth, goes back to the sixth, goes back to the, the fourth, as far as, you know, what your reputation is, is going to affect all these other houses. The eleventh house, community or enemies. So the Aquarius house, ruled by Uranus. The idea is, get there, it's like you're either having a community or you're having a bunch of enemies. You're either working together with a group of people to combat the enemies, or you're working on your own and fighting all the enemies. And, and a big, some of the bigger ideas require that 11th house working together. You know? And then the 12th, the end, so to speak. And this is where this whole video, really kind of the, the idea behind this video came from. Was this idea of like the bookends of the Zodiac, the bookends of anything. You know, the beginning and the end. You know, things come to the 12th house and some people talk about the 12th house being the end. You know, you're, you're kind of wrapping up those. and There's a lot of truth to that, but I think it's a little misleading. But that surrendering into, you know, what it is. Or does it die? You know, sometimes you have to kind of surrender into the grind. Oh, do I give up yet? Or do I surrender in to keep working at it? Do I let it die? Do I go back to my fear of not doing it? Be like, oh, you know what's that saying? You can only lose when you quit. You know, you can only not accomplish it when you quit. And that's that surrender or death. Courage or fear. So we got these two ends of the circle. And then it goes around and starts over again. So in every day, in every project, in every cycle, in every relationship, in every life. That's the beautiful thing about astrology. And so you can also kind of look at where you have planets in your chart. Where are these Words is probably the most important to you. If you got a lot of first house, it's like, where are you initiating? Where are you taking the courage to, you know? Or where are you getting lost in fear? The personal persona and around the zodiac. So anyways, kind of a little soapboxy video tonight. A little... Philosophy, a la Ralphie. Anyways, I hope you guys like it. And thank you so much for watching this video. And have a spectacular day.